Time to tell you about what I find interesting in this class. The professor has us keeping lie journals uh, to catch ourselves every time we find ourselves lying. Uh, I have just reached the second page and I'm starting to notice a pattern. The lies that I tell are almost exclusively to myself. Uh, let me give you an example. Um, I told myself that I like the taste of coffee to give myself an excuse of having a boost of energy during a long night. But upon it reaching my throat, I realized that's not true. I hate coffee. Um, second, I told myself that I would ask someone a personal question to get to know them better, but uh, when the opportunity arose, I just didn't. I sunk back into the comfort of my own phone. Now, the question here is, do these lies have consequences for others? It seems like it would only affect me and potentially a future healthcare provider that would have to help me deal with my inability to connect with my own truth. In my opinion, um, how dangerous lies are directly correlates with how much influence one has. If you have a lie that's to yourself, but you have an audience, and it gets out, well, then it can spin out of control, and it can hurt people unintentionally. Huh. Sorry, um, someone just posted a video that seems to have caught the attention of our college and beyond. I wonder who Pants on Fire is. Well, that sounds like a problem for tomorrow, Dan. This Dan has to go to bed in an hour and 53 minutes. Till next time. Starting this thing off without any awkwardness, as I do, I'm sure some of you have seen the video by now, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to give you an update on my experience in Professor Moynihan's class. First things first, yes, he really is that brilliant. I mean, listening to him talk about history and truth versus fact is literally poetry to me. So kudos, Professor Moynihan, I haven't been bored once, which is a lot more than I can say for my other classes this quarter. Probably not the best thing to be publicly broadcasting, given the standing of my scholarship. I guess you could say I'm shocked at how prevalent lying is. I mean, I didn't realize we're all liars. Every last one of us. Yet, if we were polled, the majority of us would say we're honest. In general, lying takes more cognitive effort than being honest because you have to work harder to keep your facts straight. Once you start down the pathway of lying, you not only have to remember the real facts, but the information you changed and how. So being honest is actually easier, on some level at least. The nice thing for me? I've picked up some helpful little hacks to tell if somebody's being a big fat liar. For example, if somebody barely complains or makes no negative comments at all, they're probably lying. I'm looking at you people pleasers. The more positive you try to sound, the more we think you're full of crap which makes you think, if I spend roughly 70% of my time being negative and judging, doesn't that make me like the most honest person in the world? Or at least on this campus? I'd share more of my helpful hacks with you, my dear, enormous, totally there and very engaged audience, but first you'd have to get in the class and that would make you a suspect and I don't think you want that. Welcome to your weekly edition of the Liars Club Lowdown. A few things to address before we begin. One, sorry for getting a little sappy last week. <laughs> Apparently most of you were wrong and I do have feelings. It came as a shock to me too, trust me, because my doctor had told me I was vaccinated against them. Sorry, dad jokes. Two, I just got hit up by the big buzz. Not only do they want to interview me about the Liars Club, but they also want me to write a sensational expose about all the leading suspects to be featured on their own homepage. Like, what? <laughs> I don't know, I'm still trying to decide if I should accept the assignment or not. The thing I've been struggling with is, how do you know when it's important to lie? We were asked this week to talk about an aspect of lying that we found interesting. But the truth is, I don't think I ever found a lie that I didn't find interesting. Lying by its very nature is something that we thought was worth concealing, so it's always interesting. As the professor likes to say, lying is inherent to being human. I mean, we're not born with it as an impulse or anything, but by the time we're two, most of us know how to lie. Multiple studies have shown that the more we lie, the easier it becomes. And some scientists even argue that compulsive lying is directly correlated to intelligence and creativity. And a lot of times the lies we tell are to protect people, 
not just ourselves, but people we love. Isn't that something we should value? My complicated relationship with facts has been campus gossip for a long time now. Turns out that if you dedicate your life to finding skeletons, people aren't readily jumping to befriend you. And though some would call me the king of the gossip cauldron, I know that I haven't been given the opportunity to explain to anyone why I did what I did. If you're curious about the story, I'm happy to answer any and all of your questions to the best of my ability. Hola, beautiful, beautiful people. people. The Party Twins are back and better than ever. We just want to say thank you so much for all your kind and supportive comments. I mean, we were really scared that when we came out with the truth that it... Things wouldn't be so great for us after. Yeah, but they're better than ever. And thank you guys for sharing your own stories on duality. We really appreciate it. You guys gave us major inspiration for our new book. Oh my God, so much. Oh, and we have a new sponsor, our very own local winning cup. Hashtag win, win your, your cup. cup. Also, Bella has a new caffeine addiction. No, I don't. I can stop whenever I want to. It's really a cup of ambition. Anyways, we've decided to go filter this for a while. And not just on the gram. Social media has made it so easy for us to fake always being happy. And you know what? Life isn't always happy and it doesn't have to be. So we decided that we're going to start posting things that frustrate us, things that make us sad, things that make us happy, and things that inspire us. And that's thanks to you guys. I mean, Benny and Alvaro have been the best of friends lately. And we've really been hanging out with a lot of our classmates who are super chill. And like Dan has been helping me like study and do research for our new book. And in return, I took him shopping and totes changed out her horrendous. Yet all the enduring style, look how cute he is. And despite the fact that we hate to admit it, Professor Moynihan's class isn't that bad. Well, at least for us, it must suck for whoever the real guilty party is. Yeah, like who do you guys think did it? Comment your theories below and we'll let you know if you're right on or totally suspect. Creo que me voy a pintar el pelo. ¿Qué color? Hello, fellow blood bags that continue to insist that free will exists. I'll tell you this. If free will existed, would I really be sitting here doing homework right now? Or would I be at the full moon celebration with my fellow Wiccan sisters surrounded by candles and their positive intentions? Think about it. Free will aside, the professor has asked us to investigate a part of lying that has surprised us. And frankly, I feel like we're going about solving this crime sideways, when we should be looking into the face of our fellow man and students and recognizing what we saw in the heat of the moment. I mean, I have told the professor several times who I think I saw running away from the building that night. I can't possibly fathom why he won't just call it a day and give me the A already. I think it has a lot to do with the fact that we were warring clans in a past life. But who am I to decide, other than a total goddess? A goddess who, according to my parents, both spiritual and literal, needs to get good grades. So here it is. False stories on Twitter are 70% more likely to be retweeted than the true ones. Why I love that fact is that folks around me love, love, love to complain about fake news. And how can you trust the newspaper, true crime podcasts, or me and my bees? But the reality is that you, yes, little old you, are the problem. It's your desire to feel something, something strong. You. Your need to rubberneck, to be filled with disgust and intrigue. You. To make your life feel like more than going to class all day. You. Checking the society boxes. You. Drinking your protein shake. You. Working out so that you can shave off that freshman 15. You. And then putting your head down on your Jersey blend pillowcase as you drift to sleep under the poster of some heartthrob that will never, ever, ever be yours. You. Your life that you have allowed to be so small, it makes you want more. And you get that more in the form of fake headlines and people who don't mind being the extra sauce on your daily burger. My art. Most people think it's all about me. And yes, I'm an incredible subject. But really, it's all about you. Your need for the outrageous, the outlandish, and the extreme. I am just here for you. Love, your alien queen. Hello, fellow classmates of Colvin College. Uh, I guess thank you for watching these videos and thank you for sending all the DMs. I'm sorry I haven't been getting back to all of them. It's just that I've been, well, uh, a little bit busy and not just trying to get justice from Argo like the rest of campus, but also with homework and the launch of Cuff and also with someone really special. I know my past history of relationships doesn't paint me as a dedicated man, but, well, I've 
always kind of been into the idea of sapiosexuality, where it's not the body that matters, but the mind of the person. You know, I've always kind of been attracted to smart people. Gender is irrelevant. And I guess, well, Denny and Bella, please take this as my formal apology. That I handled the whole situation wrong and moving forward, I'm hoping to be a better man. But even in the face of considerable distraction this quarter, I still find myself learning things. You know, facts and figures and things about famous liars that would make even Pinocchio blush. And I'm also learning some things about myself. Uh, looking at things in the past where maybe I let my emotions get the best of me. And maybe trying to prevent those things from happening in the future. We use the word truth all the time, but how often do we just take a moment and actually think through what truth means to us? And not like the definition in the dictionary, but what truth means in our lives. Over the last year, I've been constantly subjected to my mother harping on me about creating ubiquitous universal truth, as she calls it. But I've been starting to wonder if maybe it doesn't already exist. It's just called facts. And that maybe personal truths aren't so much wrong as just facts told through the prism of the self. Uh, kind of like when you hold a, a crystal up to a light and all of a sudden there's a rainbow. All these colorful truths just hidden in the fact of plain, simple light. If that is how the world is, then maybe we really do need cuff. And when I mentioned that we might get to try it in class sometime soon, I'm excited about that. Uh, my mother hasn't really let me in on any of the beta testing. Anyways, I guess I'm curious as to what role you think truth plays in your life. Kat Carlson, drunk and disorderly for the win. And by win, I mean new lead suspect in the arson. Okay, I know what you're thinking, friends and neighbors. Let's all say it at the exact same time. But seriously, folks, why would she be out there raging at Standish Administration Hall? It doesn't make sense. Or maybe it does. Last time I saw her, she was raging at Ali. Definitely got some anger problems, it seems. <laughs> no wonder her and Wilson are the perfect pair. They probably just howl at the moon together. I need to share this gut-wrenching news with you guys. Did you know that Kat's been getting help from Allie? Little Miss Kitty Cat has finally found her Allie. Kitty Cat? More like Alley Cat. Okay, I know what you're already typing in the comments. So what if Carlson has had help? You've had help. Everybody's had help in so this what if stupid Carlson class. You've had help. Stupid class. Everybody's, Everybody's had help. This was supposed to be where I excelled. Where a certain where a genius so would recognize Carlson's my genius in turn. Stupid class. But no, 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 no. No such luck. Stupid cat Carlson has to swoop in and snipe my place as teacher's pet. Oh, well, I end up muttering like some two-bit villain in her lair. lair. I can only hope that this new video will help set Professor Momo free of his little cat obsession. Do people not get that this whole angry loner act is in fact an act? It's an obvious persona. I've seen better sulking from kids in Hot Topic. Just because Cat is bitter and blunt does not make her more honest. If you don't believe me, just ask Ali. Cat really kept Ali in the dark about the fact that she's been hooking up with Wilson. <gasps> Unless you guys didn't know about that either. Wow, were they fighting when I left. Fighting like a pair of alley cats. Can I be honest, since apparently that's the point of this class, I was hoping there'd be more people like me in Liars Club. You know, liars. Alvaro doesn't count. None of his lies are his own. And Erica's are just histrionic and obvious. Everyone else is holier than thou. Look, Cat only has one friend, but she has one good friend. I just... The thing that really gets to me about all of this, though, is that Allie's been lying for Kat, or worse, just believing whatever her friend tells her. Lying for yourself makes sense, but lying for someone else? There's just too many variables. You can't control what your friends will slip to someone else. You don't know if they've given you the full story, which means they could be leaving out key details. And most importantly, you don't know who else saw them. Friends are a liability. If nothing else, Kat will now have a harder time getting that A. That's right, friends and neighbors, I have not given up yet. 
I will get that A. <laughs> and your little dog, too. Also, are my mom jeans tingling, or is Wilson just a little too into cuff? He's always been the cool kid, but now all of his vlogs are advertising Robot Wilson. Slide our armor, cuff so we can be our true selves. Slide ones with ties. How much information does he really know? He never has any details about the product. They haven't even let him do any beta testing. And I'm sure Wilson would be a master beta tester. <laughs> Joking aside, Super Spy 3000, who keeps leaving thumbs up emojis on my videos, nice name and Washington DC IP address. Either recruit me or stop spying on me. Choose. Finally, hacking lessons. Tip number four, the best defense is a good offense. If you don't want someone to question why you're somewhere you're not supposed to be, walk into the room angry, upset, or frantic. It puts people off balance, on the wrong foot. And if you think you can get away with it, keep them on the defensive, insult them. It's amazing how much you can get done by being a jerk, tactically. And if you're the tactical jerk that released that cat video, Hello everyone. I didn't realize these vlogs would be quite so popular. Yes, it's very strange that our professor has turned our class into a press palooza, but now that I have your attention, I think it's time to break things down. Professor M has been pushing this idea of the Rashomon effect. Or subjective truth. And honestly, I'm not sure I'm buying it. It's basically an easy way out for people unable to accept the objective truth. Also, if people can justify their lies by believing them fully, wouldn't that make Cuff and other lie detectors useless? I am not under the misconception that all truth can be objective, but allowing subjective truth to be considered a fact is a dangerous idea at a time when what is considered a fact is already under fire. People have been trained to believe everything we hear and see with little to no fact checking of their own. I mean, there used to be such integrity with news and now <laughs> opinion pieces are considered fact. And honestly, I don't know how to fight that. Right now, I'm at a loss. It seems like the only way to fight this objective truth is by representation of the underrepresented in the media. We need more documentaries showing real frontline communities in order to grab attention of those in power. More sitcoms and dramas where the lead actors are people of color. That way we can change the perspective of what is normal. At least then we can see both sides. If there's one thing I'm learning in Professor M's class is that we all lie and we can't help it. So instead of trying to prevent the subjective truth, we must combat it by showing the world that the opposite can be equally true. It's not a perfect solution, but it's, it's a step. Well, that's all for now. Don't forget to come to Tower for my monthly radical reading group with Aisha and Jamie. And don't forget, if you miss it, it's totally fine. I'll have everything I'm reading in a list so you can read at home. Bye, guys. Mwah.